All right, it's time to ditch the carrots and try these foods for eye health instead. And if you feed your gut buddies what they want, you can actually improve your eyesight. No joke. And we're going to get into the one food you absolutely need to avoid if you want beautiful eyes that shine. First of all, nuts. Hazelnuts, pine nuts, walnuts will improve your eye health. Why? Because they contain vitamin E, the usable forms of vitamin E. A large study found that vitamin E, together with other nutrients, can help slow age-related macular degeneration, AMD, from getting worse. The problem with most, not all, but most vitamin E supplements in multivitamins or even alone actually contain the wrong artificial isomer of vitamin E. And what you really want is to get all the different forms of vitamin E, which are tocophenols and tocotrienols. And you need to get that from whole foods like nuts. Again, Hazelnuts, pine nuts, and walnuts are a big three for improving eye health. Dark leafy greens. Why? Because they contain carotenoids, lutein, and zeaxanthin. And you'll see many commercials on TV advertising these particular compounds to help eye health and to improve macular degeneration or prevent macular degeneration in the first point. These plant-based forms of vitamin A will lower your risk of long-term eye diseases, including cataracts and AMD. Next up, small fish, anchovies, mackerel, oysters, and wild-caught salmon. Why? They contain the long-chain omega-3 fats, EPA and DHA. Now, retinas, the back of our eye that actually allows us to see things, need two types of omega-3 fatty acids to work well, both DHA and EPA. You can find this in fatty fish and seafood. Now, Omega-3 fats seem to protect your eyes from AMD and from glaucoma. Low levels of these fatty acids have been linked to dry eyes. The important thing to remember is try to get wild-caught seafood. Not a day goes by that one of my patients tells me they're eating healthy, organic, farm-raised seafood. Folks, the definition of farm-raised means that the fish were in a cage and they were fed organic corn and soybeans. The fish weren't followed around to see what they were eating organically. So if you see the organic, even if it sounds wonderful like organic salmon from Scotland or organic Nordic salmon or organic Canadian salmon, don't buy it. Look for wild caught. The easiest way to look for wild caught salmon is by law, Alaskan salmon has to be wild caught. That's not true of Canadian salmon. It's not true of Norway, not true of the Nordic countries. Just look for wild caught Alaskan, just the word Alaskan salmon and you'll be fine. Yes, it's only available part of the year. That's okay. Stock up during the season, which quite frankly is right now, and freeze it. It'll stay a long time in your freezer. To me, the easiest way to get these small fish is to buy some sardines. If you don't like the skin and bones, get boneless skinless. They're readily available, even at Trader Joe's. They're available at Costco. And it's an easy way to get these small omega-3 fish into your diet. Next up, dark chocolate. Dark chocolate greater than 72% cacao has polyphenols that will dramatically improve your eye health. Berries contain several compounds that have been shown to improve eye health. This was first noted back in World War II when British fighter pilots 
were actually fed bilberry jam every day to improve their night vision. Why bilberries? Bilberries contain a lot of polyphenols. But you don't have to go eat bilberry jam. You can get your polyphenols from berries, from particularly raspberries and blackberries. Try to eat them in season. Polyphenols in dark chocolate, polyphenols in coffee, polyphenols in tea will also benefit your eye health. There was an exciting study published a few years ago by an ophthalmologist who gave a polyphenol compound product, which I personally use, called Longevinex, to people with macular degeneration and published results that macular degeneration improved by taking this polyphenol product whose main base is resveratrol. So there is good science behind the idea that this will support your eye health as well. Now, a word of warning. Not a day goes by that I don't see a commercial on TV or in social media attesting to various ways to bring out the brightness and whiteness of your eyes. Everybody is fixated on getting rid of the redness in eyes. And there is a very popular prescription medication that will do this, but it comes at a price. You'll see in my new book, Gut Check, that one of the biggest drivers of eye irritation and eye redness is a compound in healthy whole grains called wheat germ agglutinin. Now, I've been telling you since the plant paradox how dangerous wheat germ agglutinin, WGA, is for your blood vessels, for leaky gut, for heart health, and brain health. But suppose you're not worried about that. If you want red eyes, have yourself some whole wheat bread. You will be loaded with wheat germ agglutinin. You will make antibodies to it. And it turns out that wheat germ agglutinin sticks to your eyeballs. You make an antibody against it and you get red eyes. So save yourself a lot of money. Save yourself some prescriptions. Stop eating whole wheat bread. Easy way to get rid of the problem. Now, there are other great tips for eye health that I've talked about in the past. First of all, buy yourself a pair of blue light blocking glasses to protect your eyes from junk blue light, which is everywhere. Wear them when you're working on a computer, looking at your phone, and certainly while watching TV at night. Now, make sure they're quality blue light blocking glasses. There are many imposters out there that block little to no blue light. And look for my recommendations in my books or even online. Finally, exercise your eyes. There's great ways to do eye yoga. You can do palming. You can do eye rolling. You should exercise the muscles of your eyeballs. There are important muscles that will help you avoid eye strain. And you'll notice that if you're staring at something for a long time, you will definitely notice your eyesight diminish. Take a break. Roll your eyes. Have somebody tell a bad joke and roll your eyes at the bad joke. Exercise your eyes. Could one spoonful of this support healthy blood sugar? All right, what is blood sugar really? Now, it's not just a term for diabetics, although we hear it on TV all the time. Blood sugar is what's measured when you get a fasting glucose in your doctor's office, or now with the continuous glucose monitors that are becoming all the rage. Glucose really are energy currency. It's what we use to make ATP for the most part. Glucose is really important to keep within a very fine range. Why? Because elevated glucose actually is very damaging to the inner lining of our blood vessels. And that lining has got a fascinating name called the glycocalyx. Glyco means sugar. And these are a very fine web of sugar molecules that protect the lining of our blood vessels. 
They protect the lining of our blood-brain barrier. They actually protect the eye surface. And studies have shown that if blood sugar, blood glucose, goes a little bit high for a little period of time, that that glycocalyx becomes damaged. And that's becoming increasingly clear why blood sugar spikes are probably really bad for heart health, for brain health, because of the damage to the glycocalyx. All right, so what are some great tricks to support healthy blood sugar levels? My number one trick is a relatively new sweetener called allulose. Now, if you've read my most recent book, Unlocking the Keto Code, you know that allulose is my preferred sweetener of choice. Allulose is actually a true rare sugar. It was first discovered in figs. It is a true sugar, but unlike sugar, table sugar, which is sucrose, which is half fructose and half glucose, by the way, this sugar has no effect on blood sugar levels. It has no calories, and it's the first FDA-approved prebiotic sugar replacement. That's really important. So why is allulose so cool, you might ask? Well, when it was being developed in a study comparing the effects of consuming allulose, cellulose, in a commercial diet in rats with insulin resistance, the allulose group had improved insulin sensitivity after seven weeks. Insulin sensitivity means that it's easier to sell sugar to your cells. And that's what you want for keeping your sugar levels low. In another study, 30 participants received a 50 gram dose of sucrose or table sugar, followed by either a placebo or allulose. The allulose group experienced significantly lower blood sugar levels after 30 minutes than the placebo group. And study after study shows that allulose blocks the effect of elevated blood sugar even after consuming a cup of coffee. Now, the great thing about allulose is that it gives you a sweet taste without spiking your blood sugar, and it does it while feeding your gut buddies with prebiotics. It's a win-win. In fact, there are some very encouraging studies that supplementing with allulose, not to get things sweet, but just supplementing with allulose can have a dramatic effect on weight loss, particularly on losing abdominal fat. And as you know, fat in your gut, you're out of luck. The other thing that's great about allulose is it tastes very much like pure sugar. There is nothing artificial about allulose. So, put a teaspoon or so in your morning coffee. Pour it over some goat's or sheep yogurt to get rid of that tangy taste that many of you complain about. Put it in your green smoothie. Bake with it. It's a great addition to your armamentarium, particularly when we're looking at keeping blood sugars under control. Now, number two. Cinnamon. Now, if you needed more excuses to include cinnamon in your diet, this is it. Numerous human studies have confirmed that cinnamon can lower fasting blood sugar levels from anywhere to 10 to 30 percent. Why? Well, it's loaded with polyphenols. Polyphenols are superb mitochondrial uncouplers. And if you've read Unlocking the Keto Code, you know that when we uncouple mitochondria, we actually waste calories, waste sugar, and that's part of the effect of lowering your blood sugar. So it's a win-win. I mean, did you ever wonder why there's a cinnamon shaker in almost every coffee shop? And there's actually very good examples of adding cinnamon as you're brewing your coffee to reduce the blood sugar spike that coffee often causes. The Viennese are actually famous for doing this. Viennese coffee has a considerable amount of cinnamon added to the coffee, and that's what makes it. 
of Viennese coffee. Now, you've been probably told that if you really want to lower your blood sugar, one of the best things you can do is eat whole grains. Now, I'm here to tell you that that could not be further from the truth. Here's why. The problem is that most of the grains in whole grain foods have been finely ground up. In fact, I'll ask my patients, go to the store, buy a loaf of whole grain bread, and open it up and look at a slice. Do you see any whole grains in there? Of course not. They've all been ground up. Now, the problem with starches, starches in general, if they're whole, are slowly digested. And that would, in fact, keep blood sugar low. But once you grind up these starches into a fine powder, literally pulverized, they instantly turn into blood sugar faster than actually sugar gets into your bloodstream, table sugar. That's why, for instance, bread has a glycemic index of 100, while white table sugar has an index of 80. If you wanted to keep your blood sugar low, the last thing you want to have is ground up grains, even if they're whole. Now, why do you hear this so much? Because the original research was done with rats who were eating grains whole. And then that was extrapolated to human populations that also ate their grains whole. And yes, these people in general had quite nice low blood sugars, and yes, the rats did too. But that doesn't mean that when you grind up that whole grain that you're going to have the same result. This is marketing 101. Now finally, things could actually get worse. Once you grind up a whole grain, the fats in that whole grain go rancid very quickly. They rust, they smell. So companies add antioxidants like BHT to prolong the shelf life. These antioxidants are some of the most profound endocrine disruptors there are. So the fact that you're taking a whole grain and now pulverizing it, you're now adding an endocrine disruptor. So you now have a double whammy from increased blood sugar, endocrine disruptors, and let me add the final nail to the coffin. Whole grains contain lectins. And for years and years and years since grains have been eaten, people have been trying and succeeding in getting the whole out of whole grains because they've been eliminating the lectins. And we should not be fooled. This is going to be fun, and this is important information that I've been talking about now for my last three books, starting with The Energy Paradox, Unlocking the Keto Code, and now Gut Check. And that is the importance of mitochondria. Now, most of us who had high school biology remember seeing a picture of a cell. And in that cell, there were these kind of wiggly, squiggly things that uh, almost looked like a radiator that are mitochondria. And if you remember, we were taught that the mitochondria is the energy powerhouse of the cell. And that's absolutely true. If you've read any of my recent books, you know that mitochondria, we think, are ancient bacteria that two billion years ago were engulfed by other single-celled organisms and made an exchange that instead of being eaten, that the mitochondria, that bacteria, would take the food that the cell ate and convert it into the energy currency adenosine triphosphate, ATP, in exchange for not being eaten. And apparently it was a very good deal because almost all advanced life forms, uh, plants and animals, use mitochondria 
to make ATP. But they still retain some characteristics of being engulfed bacteria. One of the more fascinating things is that mitochondria have their own DNA separate from the nucleus of the cell. Now, in what we're going to learn today, that's exciting news because normally a cell has to divide to split all the DNA into two new cells. But a mitochondria can divide on its own to make two new mitochondria or, for that matter, replace itself with a better, newer mitochondria without the cell having to divide. And that's really exciting because once we know the stimuli to allow mitochondria to repair themselves and to divide, that opens up all sorts of opportunities for improving our ability to make ATP, regardless of the state of the rest of the cell. Why is that important? Well, remember back in high school biology, we maybe saw one of these guys in a cell or two of these guys in a cell. But in fact, cells can be packed with mitochondria. Thousands of mitochondria, even as in a muscle cell, for instance. Thousands of mitochondria in an important neuron, for instance. So it's not just a couple of these little guys. These guys are essential for producing ATP. And quite frankly, the more ATP you produce out of the foods you eat, the better off your muscles are, your brain is, your heart is, you name it, the better. Also, my research has shown that you really want the mitochondria in the cells that make up the wall of your gut to be in tip-top shape because that's where the rubber meets the road in terms of you surviving well for a very long time. Okay, now, if you've read The Energy Paradox, for that matter, if you've read Unlocking the Keto Code, you know that our modern lifestyle is really good at mucking up the works with our mitochondria. Our modern lifestyle and the foods we eat really damage our mitochondria. And our mitochondria, when they're damaged, one of two things is possible. First of all, if a mitochondria is damaged beyond repair, normally it literally explodes. And it's called apoptosis. And that explosion of the mitochondria gets rid of the mitochondria, no doubt about it. But in the process of exploding, it actually produces cellular debris that causes, you guessed it, inflammation. So the more damaged mitochondria that you have and the more that they undergo apoptosis, the more inflammation. There's a second way that mitochondria, which are damaged, can be taken care of, and that's called autophagy, better known as self-eat, eat itself. Now, when mitochondria undergo autophagy, it's got its own term called mitophagy, or eat your own mitochondria. What that literally means is the mitochondria undergoes recycling. Rather than exploding and spewing out all the various components of a mitochondria, it literally recycles every last bit. So that autophagy or mitophagy is really good for you because not only does it, it not make inflammation, but it also recycles the components so that you get a fresh new mitochondria. So that's what you want to do. And if you've actually read about how we do that, we, there are numerous mechanisms to improve mitophagy. Time-restricted eating is one of the most famous methods of making mitophagy. Exercise is one of the other great ways of improving mitophagy. But as you'll learn in Gut Check, having the right microbiome and having the right nutrients for the microbiome may be another way that we really haven't known about until recently. Let's talk about an exciting new compound called urolithin A. 
a little bit of history. We have known for a very long time that there is a polyphenol that's uh, present in raspberries, in pomegranates, in a few other compounds, walnuts, for example, called gallic acid. And gallic acid has been a darling of us polyphenol experts because we've known from studies that pomegranate extract, raspberry extract with egallic acid seems to have some pretty cool health-promoting properties. And it's been a darling of polyphenol. Uh, enter a company called Timeline Nutrition, which is a Swiss-based company. This Swiss-based company, uh, a number of years ago, began investigating various polyphenol compounds, including egallic acid, and looked at the possibility of lifespan extension in worms, for example, in mice, for example. And lo and behold, uh, they found that egallic acid seemed to be really, really interesting in terms of promoting longevity. So they doubled down on how egallic acid worked. And lo and behold, they found that it really wasn't egallic acid that was the miracle worker. They found that if you had certain bacteria in your gut, that those bacteria would convert egallic acid into the active compound, a postbiotic, which is called urolithin A. Now, what's so exciting about urolithin A is that when you look at animal studies, urolithin A promotes mitophagy. That is recycling damaged mitochondria and making new ones. And the process of making new ones is called mitogenesis. All right, mitophagy, breaking down a damaged mitochondria, mitogenesis, then making it into a new one. So needless to say, breaking down damaged mitochondria without doing damage, great idea. Making new ones, an even better idea. And so what they found was that urolithin A was actually the magic ingredient. Now, what's so cool about that is you got to have the right gut bacteria to make urolithin A. And unfortunately, research has now shown that only about 12% of us have the right combination of gut bacteria that if they're exposed to, let's say, pomegranate seeds or pomegranate juice, they then will make urolithin A that will then have the actions that we want. Only 12%. Uh, that doesn't sound very good. Why is that important? Well, the important thing is you could eat all the raspberries in the world. You could drink six glasses of pomegranate juice. And unless you are one of the lucky 12%, you're probably not going to make the compound that you're looking for, urolithin A. What's really fascinating, and I talk about in Gut Check, if you look at super old people who are thriving in their mid to late 90s, early 100s, this group of people have the bacteria that make urolithin A. Son of a gun. We're learning more and more that it may not be the compound that we're eating, but it's the bacteria that are eating that compound that make all the difference. And here's just another connection now that these super old people have bacteria that make urolithin A. And that's one of the reasons they're super old, because they're constantly upgrading their mitochondria through autophagy and mitogenesis. So what's really impressive is that we now have science that shows that this, in fact, is true, not only in animals, but in humans. So mitopure is the name, the trade name of urolithin A that's made by the Swiss scientists at Timeline Nutrition. 
And many of you may have heard that I'm so impressed with urolith A that I've had their chief scientist on my podcast. It's that important. And quite frankly, I've been taking this compound since it was introduced, and I prescribe it to a large number of my patients, particularly with issues in muscle mass problems, in autoimmune problems, and in neurologic problems. So let's get into the science a bit. All right, so in one study, there's a worm that we use in longevity studies called C. elegans that is st is, is, is stood the test of time in that what we find in this worm study invariably translates into higher animals, including humans. So that groundbreaking research often starts with this little worm. So it boosted the lifespan, urolithin A might appear, boosted the lifespan of C. elegans worms by 45% over worms that didn't get this compound. And it increased mouse aerobic performance, in other words, how long they could run on a treadmill, by 40% versus mice who didn't get it. Now, it turns out that it kickstarts mitophagy in humans. And human studies now show that you get an impressive boost in muscle strength just by taking mitopure urolithin A, regardless of changing a strength training program. So that's pretty doggone exciting news. Once again, yes, you maybe are one of the lucky ones who could drink pomegranate juice or have a lot of raspberries and make urolithin A, but you're probably not. In fact, there's some studies that suggest you would need six glasses of pomegranate juice per day to even have detectable levels of urolithin A. And I can't tell you the sugar content of six glasses of pomegranate juice. So imagine how much easier it is to get the benefits of mitophagy and mitogenesis just from a supplement. So, in humans, within six hours of taking Mitopure, urolithin A is detected in the bloodstream. And after a month of use, you can actually measure an uptick in mitochondrial activity. And these benefits can actually continue to accrue over the next four months. Now, I've been taking this compound. And I can attest that I see benefits for myself and my patients. One of the things that has been remarkable for me is, you know, I'm now in my 70s. And as many of you know, I'm a, an avid hiker and think nothing of going 10, 12 miles in hills on hikes. But I noticed over oh, the last few years that my balance on steep rocky slopes, both going up and maybe going down, was uh, not as good as it was before. And I could say, eh, I'm just getting old and maybe I should get some hiking sticks. But I could actually, you know, feel that there was something going on. Imagine my delight that since taking Might of Pure, my balance and stability has returned to my levels where in my 50s and 60s. And the only thing I did differently, I didn't get a wobble board, I didn't increase my Pilates, was add mine appear. And so I'm, I'm a big believer from a personal standpoint. Now, anecdotes don't mean anything. But I can tell you that a number of my patients uh, who I have put on for multiple reasons, have noticed a big difference. So it's kind of cool, uh, you know, and that's why I'm excited about this compound. There's recent evidence that this compound activates natural killer cells, which are really important in not only cancer prevention, but cancer treatment. And that's actually one of the reasons I started this last patient on it. So the, the sky is the limit. Many of us believe that 
cancer is actually because our mitochondria have kind of fallen off the grid and are no longer producing the way they should. And if you like this theory, which I do, getting mitochondria back on the grid, back operating, back producing energy may be a very effective way of preventing cancer and maybe even treating cancer. So again, when your mitochondria go, you go. When your mitochondria in your brain goes, your brain goes. When your mitochondria in your muscles go, your heart is a muscle go. That's what goes. So any compound that now has a proven ability to clean up damaged mitochondria and make new ones and actually improve muscle mass and performance, that's something well worth my interest and your interest. And that's why I personally am such a fan of urolithin A and the company Timeline Nutrition. And that's why I wanted to tell you more about why this compound is, is worthy of your interest. Thanks so much for watching this episode, but don't go anywhere. I think you're gonna love this next one.